an author I like has this to say about the, uh, <laughs> about the interaction of charges and magnetic fields. She says, none of this is intuitively obvious. So here we are studying something that doesn't quite make sense, but we'll try to make some sense of it. <clears throat> I want to teach you about magnetism now. We've studied a lot about electricity, and it's time to get into magnetism. So if I present to you a bar magnet, I'll just, heck, I'll just put north up on top, and I put some iron filings near it. <clears throat> they are written like this and a lot of people mispronounce it. In fact, even me as a kid mispronounced it. It is not iron fillings because that would have two L's. This is filings from a piece of iron. So I'm gonna put this bit of, uh, well, I have a whole bunch of iron filings and I'm gonna set them near the magnet. And I want you to look at what's happening right here. If you've got that HD image right here, you can probably see that there's some very interesting pattern that's being formed right here. It seems like from this point, all the filings are pointing out or in or something, and that's also happening over here. There's a lot of this kind of lining. So <clears throat> the thing is, in the presence of a magnetic field, iron filings, which are just little tiny chips of iron, which is a ferromagnetic material, iron filings become magnetized. And that means that they are suddenly very small magnets, which reminds me of a compass. So if I've got this compass right here, this compass is gonna show me the direction of the magnetic field. And the issue is when you've got a compass, you never know, this is my very, very important lesson with compasses, you never know whether this side is indicating north or that side is indicating north. So if you're just trying to find your way home, for instance, you need to find some way of knowing which way is north, south-ish, and this will more precisely help you identify which way is north or south. But you'll see there are some problems using a compass because oftentimes if it's near another magnet besides just our fair planet, then it will be distracted by that magnet and this compass is clearly not indicating north, it's indicating the direction of the magnetic field around this magnet. So you've got some interesting stuff going on here. I'm gonna shrink my magnet and try to draw you a little bit of magnetic field around it. And if I have north up here and south up here, we say sort of by definition, no, definitely by definition, that the field is coming out of the north pole and going into the south pole. So it's going like this. Also, it should be known that the reason there's a magnetic field inside of something like a ferromagnet is because each of the domains inside of here is approximately aligned. So there, is, there are regions inside of here that have magnetic field on their own, and they're microscopic, but you can view them in a microscope. They are regions usually where the, um, where the metal is all crystalline in one direction, and these are um, grain boundaries here sometimes uh, causing boundaries between domains. But the cool thing is the magnetic field exists inside of the magnet as well. So it's going that direction and it's going in at the south pole and down over here and down over here. And it's a three dimensional thing. We'd also have one come out here and be pointing down and going in and behind the paper as well, but that's hard to draw. So this looks like, wow, it looks exactly like having a positive charge. How do we do positive, red? It looks like having a positive charge here, Q greater than zero, and a negative charge over here, Q less than zero. And it looks like the electric field that would result from these guys, well, outside of like a box where you don't get to look. Da, 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 Let's pretend that that is our quote unquote magnet. And at least outside of that range, you get field that's pointing like this and going in there and like this and going in there. Now in between, there's this really strong field this direction, of course. Um, and, and there's some interesting stuff going on here. It's going out and in there and out and in there. And you do actually get to see this in a... Um, You get to see this inside of here, except for inside of the magnet, even right here, you'll get a little loop that's got a down arrow right there. So not everything is coming out the poles in a bar magnet, but a lot of it is. All right, so yeah, this is the general shape of the field of a dipole, and this is an electric dipole, and this is a magnetic dipole, and you can't get magnetic monopoles. If you do, send me an email. I'd like to talk to you before you talk to anybody else. 
Secondly, this is a compass, and a compass should be thought of as a SMAP tack. A compass's job is, oh, sorry, small positive test charge is what we're going to use over there, and a compass is what we're going to use over here to indicate the direction of the field. If I place a compass right here, then it will point lined up with the field. So let's pretend I put a compass right here. It will point that direction. And if I put a compass right here, it will point that direction. If I put a compass here, it will point that way, and a compass here will point that way. Anybody surprised by the action of the compass? It is indicating the direction of the magnetic field. All right, so that's cool, and I want to next teach you a beautiful law. This is a law that says magnetic force is felt by moving charges in a magnetic field, and it's a vector equation. So first of all, I said a charge feels a force, so you have to have a charge. If you have no net charge, then you will have no net force. You might have a separation or a compression or something. We'll look at those sorts of situations. You have to have a charge. You have to be moving in a magnetic field, so it depends on velocity. And you have to be moving in a magnetic field, so it depends on magnetic field. And it's linear in all of these quantities. And you remember this cross product. The cross product wants things not to be parallel, like a dot product, but the cross product is the vector product, and it wants things to be normal to each other. So if we just are, um, are interested in the angle between V and B, we hope that that's angle's 90. If the angle's zero, then we're not gonna get any force from the magnetic field at all. So we're gonna write Q, V, B times the sine of the angle between V and B. Let's make sure we define theta carefully here because some people get sloppy with this. Just take some random theta. Theta is angle between V and B, as vectors right there. Okay, beautiful. So this has, in fact, defined the magnetic field. Maybe you don't see it like that yet, but I will point out to you how it works. This defines the magnetic field because now a magnetic field, wow, I didn't realize that tropical violet was so similar to regular violet. Go figure. It does have a tropical flavor though. <clears throat> the magnetic field then is the force felt by a charge moving in a magnetic field divided by that charge and divided by how fast it's going and divided by the sine of the angle between its velocity and the magnetic field. So I'll get you a, um, I'll get you a magnetic field. Which way do you want it to be? Let's say that our magnetic field is pointing, um, oh, these are tips of arrows. So this magnetic field must be pointing outward. Here's our magnetic field direction. It's not pointing to the right, that's just saying it's a vector hat right there. So I've got a magnetic field that is pointing out of the page and it seems to be regularly, re a little bit relatively uniform. I'll put a little charge right here and I'll kick it. And I'll say that this charge is less than zero. And I'm gonna have another charge and I wanna see how that sucker's gonna move. And it's going to be greater than zero. And I want them to go to the right, let's say. All right, so you get to go this way. Wait, should I do velocity in that direction? Oh, shoot. Here's what I wanna do. I wanna call the velocity this pink arrow. That's the velocity. I'm going to kick both of them to the right. And I'm wondering which way they will feel forces, so I get whew, the right hand rule. It's going to be velocity being my thumb, Magnetic field being my pointer finger, and F being my middle finger. Go ask your mom, that's complicated. My point is V, B, and F, if I hold my hand like this, are mutually normal to each other. You've got an angle of 90 degrees here, you've got an angle of 90 degrees here, and you've got an angle of 90 degrees between the velocity and the force. So assuming that your velocity and your magnetic field are at right angles, then the force will be at a right angle to them as well. Notice this doesn't work with your left hand. I get exactly the opposite. If the velocity is that way and the magnetic field is up, then I would say that the force is exactly the opposite direction. The left hand purely gives a minus sign. So I'm gonna write down right hand rule, and the rule is use right hand for positive charges. 
and we want to find simply the direction of the force. The magnitude of the force will be given that by this equation, as we've already said, but I want to find the direction of the force. So notice that the velocity is that direction and the magnetic field is out of the page, so I need to put my velocity that way and my magnetic field out of the page. Uh-oh, the positive charge will feel a force down. See if you can get your hand like that so that you see that relative to your screen. The positive charge will feel a force down. And I was thinking I would do the velocity in pink and the force in primrose. This is the magnetic force and it's down for that charge. The negative charge though, I have to use my left hand. So I've got velocity that way and magnetic field straight up for me. And so the force is this direction. The magnetic force is that way. Ooh, so charges feel different forces depending on what charge they have. This is beautiful. You could set up a magnetic field and shoot a beam of particles through it and the ones that are positive will go that way and the ones that are negative will go that way. That's cool. It's like a, a selector for that and we can go into all kinds of details but I just want to say a couple things before we go on. You get all kinds of great motion. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. <clears throat> the units of magnetic field, I can put it right in here. Check it out, I can. The units of magnetic field. Well, we use units of Tesla to honor Nikolai Tesla, that crazy physicist, super brilliant and quite a bit crazy. And a Tesla is one Newton per amp meter, but you know that an amp is a coulomb per second. So this is also the same thing as one Newton per coulomb meter per second. So notice this unit is most consistent with this definition. It says force divided by charge times speed, and of course sine of theta is a unitless number. Oftentimes, the unit of a Gauss is used, and I should just point out here that one Gauss is 10 to the negative four Tesla. This is not a common relationship. 10 to the minus four is not handy. 10,000, it's kind of annoying. But a Gauss is approximately, or half a Gauss or so, is approximately the magnetic field that you'd find near the surface of Earth. So it's a reasonable unit for small magnetic fields. If you work in a magnetic field lab, you've probably seen between five and 10 Tesla, which would be between 50,000 and 100,000 Gauss. So that's awesome. Goodbye.